Couch, dog, me, palaces. Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome fingerstyle blues lesson right here on Lickin' Riff in which we'll explore fingerstyle blues in A. Now this lesson is fed both for beginners and for intermediate players. I'm gonna give you as many ideas as I possibly can. We're gonna explore both the, okay, the basic positions and, okay, and more um, advanced positions. Advanced, technically advanced because it's further up the neck, but it's nothing overly complicated. I wanna give you a toolbox you can take and use for your own improvisation and exploration around the neck. So, um, I assume that you've watched my previous blues lessons, especially the uh, five essential blues riffs lesson, because um, that gives you a really nice basis. And uh, I'm not gonna um, uh, spend a lot of time talking about rhythm because I assume that you've also watched my uh, Travis Baking lesson and that you also uh, know how to shuffle. But if you're not, let's start with this. Okay, take A7 and you play the A bass string twice. Okay, you can mute it. Okay, palm mute it. And then play strings two, three, and four and slide the chord into place from one fret down. Okay, so it's one and two, uh, sorry, one and one on strings two and four. Okay, moving to two and two on strings two and four. And you can play strings two, three, and four, okay? Because this note is the seventh note, so. Okay, this is the shuffle version of this. A shuffle um, rhythm is dum, da dum, da dum, da dum, da dum. Okay, in case you don't know, now you know. Okay, so now we've got that clear out of the way, we can start playing. Okay, so just explore this. You can uh, play the chord anytime. Okay, and just find different expressions for this little lick if you're just starting out. Now, once you're done with that, you can play three, two, zero on the E string as additional notes. Now you can play all sorts of different licks. Right? Using your pinky. Or if you want, you can use two fingers, even though this is a little bit uncomfortable. So I suggest you use these two fingers for the chord, okay, fingers two and three, and use the pinky for two and three on the E string. Um, it might look a little bit daunting at first, but it's not really. Right? And then when you're done with A7, you need to move to D7. Now the obvious choice would be okay, the D7, okay, we all know and love, the basic position, but I disagree. I think a better D7 would be this, okay, the C7 shape, two frets up, okay, strings two to five on three, five, four, five, okay, it's C7, two frets up, and you can do that as a transition. if you like, or just the bass notes. Okay, just make sure that you're using the third finger because then you put the rest of the chord on. Okay, instead of, and then having to let go of the note. So use the right finger, okay? Now, you can also do okay, three, four on the fifth string and then the open D string to lead you into this D7, but this D7 is a little bit confined because all you can do is basically the same thing you did on A7, which is three and two on the, um, on the E string, so. Okay, you can also pull off to zero, but this is a little bit thin. Too many options there. 
I know I looked like I was suffering, but that was only because my mind was racing trying to figure out different ways to play this, and there aren't that many. Um, you can also use three on the second string, okay, so, okay, but again, this really confines the, the chord because if this is the solo, so this is the chord, and this is not really a blues chord, this is just an interval, it's not really a chord, it's a D5. Um, so you want to get the seventh chord feel, and that's why I prefer this chord. Okay, the C7 shape, because then you have the open E string anyway. Okay, so you have the ninth, so it becomes a D9 chord immediately. So you can choose to use it or not. You can play, okay, just strings two to five. Okay, I move to Travis picking now to give you a different feel for the chord. Then you can, you can move chromatically down and up. You can also use one note. Okay, just two and three on the second string. Okay, this creates an interesting sound, but it's a more advanced sound. If your ear is not used to that, then never mind. Okay, um, okay the more uh, you get used to, uh, to music, the more you want to dirty up the chords. I don't know why that is, but it's, uh, it's a fact. That's uh, the only reason advanced jazz exists and a tonal music, but don't get me started. So um, if you want to use the open E string, it opens up an array of sounds because you can play strings one and two, one and three, two, one, three. Okay, all sorts of combinations between the three notes. And if you're using shuffle, Sounds like this if you're using Travis picking. Okay, now you can also open the second string. Okay, and also use that as the basis for a lick. Okay, I didn't want to do it uh, this early in the lesson, but my fingers did it, so why not? If this strikes you as strange, okay, this is a six, okay, the, this is the sixth uh, sound. So this becomes D13. So this becomes D913. Okay, very complicated, but just one shape, okay? okay? And you have so many options. If this sounds weird to you, just imagine uh, how it sounds with the addition of two on the second string. Okay, you can move the whole chord, sounds a little bit better. Okay, but again, this is a little bit of a dirty sound and we want to keep it bluesy and I got a little bit sidetracked, so let's go back to the normal blues sound. back to A. But again, I suggest a different A. You can also play this. Okay, this A7. It's the same notes as this. Okay? Strings one, two, and three, but here. You can vibrate it. You can move it around. So it's five, six, and five on strings two, three, and four. Why is that? Because it's inside the a7 bar shape. Okay, if you put A and you take the pinky off, you have 5, 6, 5 on strings 2, 3, and 4. And you have the open A bass string, so why not use it? Okay, now if you want this boogie feel, then you can also add a slide on the bass. slide into D. You see, you don't have to get overly complicated to create a nice finger style blues. Having said that, after complicating things. That's just how I am. Okay? 
Now, um, if you don't want Travis Beck, that's also fine. Okay. Now, there's another D7, which is 7 and 5 on strings 2 and 3. Or 5, 7 and 5 on strings 1, 2 and 3. Okay. Depending on how uh, high up you want to go. Okay. And the open D string, of course. So okay, you can also use eight on the second string, but again, this is a little bit confined because you have the D string, so you can't really create um, complex arpeggios like this chord allows. Now, for E7, you can take the C, say, uh, the C7 shape two frets up to five, seven, five, seven, six, seven, and then. Then go back to D and go back to A or and then go back to this A and this E. Now this is where things can get a little bit um, a little bit more complex because you can also use A7 here, which is a D7 shape on nine, so it's nine eight nine. So and you get this sound. Or and then you can do this D. Okay? Now this okay, bar on five A shape is D. And you can do the seventh note on five on the third string or an octave up on E on the eighth fret. Right? So you can do this. Okay, 877 seven, and the open D string. Okay. Again, you can use the chromatic uh, approach or you can solo. Okay. You have okay, you have the whole the whole uh, second position okay, of the A pentatonic. Okay, so it's uh, 10 and 8 on strings 1 and 2, and 9 and 7 on the third string. So we're already here, okay? 8, 7, 7, so... Okay, now since we're on D, we also have 7 on the second string, so... Okay, so... You can use the chromatic approach here. This shape again, the D shape on five on strengths two to four. Okay? It all depends how you want to connect it. There's always a new shape to connect to. Okay? This can be this A with five on the E string or the whole bar. You can bar, of course. Yeah, I just want to show you the less obvious options. Obvious options. Okay? You can use it, the, the bar with uh, 8 and 7 on the second string. Okay? You have 5 on the bar, which is the same as okay? 3, 2, and 0 on the E string. So. It's the same thing, um, just a different approach. So. Um, Let's try to connect everything, okay? Let's start with A. Yeah, the chromatic. Let's start simple. Okay? The D shape. Okay? And a neat trick is to uh, change the chord using the last note of the solo. So I did this. Okay? And when I played five on the second string, I played it with the first finger, so I can put on E7. Okay, so.
Remember the bass? Yeah, you can also you can also do D6 using seven, seven, and seven on the first, second, and third strings. have E6 on 9, 9, and 9, so you can do that as well. And then go back to A chromatically, okay? D7 shape on 9. Okay? And then just lay it down. Okay, for E6. Okay? Now this might sound a little bit weird. So you can do 7, 7, 7 as E9, but that's taking it a little bit too far, I admit. So, and then, yeah, you can, you can do it. Yeah, you can do the full chord. Okay, uh, which is seven 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 six seven. Okay, you need to bar it with your third finger. Okay, or you can just do this and just play the sixth string. Okay, and then D would be the D seven that we played uh, five seven and five. Maybe so. Again, it's all a matter of where you want to lead the uh, the. Um, the lead solo voice. Okay, you can stay there and play 8 on the E string, and then it would become D7 immediately. So, okay, with E9, you can play 9 on the E string, and then the 8 turns it into D7. And then go back to this, or stay there. Um, okay, with 10 on the second string, which is with a D shape, instead of A7, you have A major. Okay, you can end on A major. And then go back to E7, and this brings you back to the beginning. So uh, let's just try around. Um, I'll try to switch into creative mode instead of analytical mode player mode and teacher mode, two different parts of the brain, so let's see if I can do it. Uh, but before I uh, play it, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I don't know why you're not subscribed yet. There's a ton of free lessons over here. Everything is free. Um, of course, you can become a patron on Patreon and uh, support Lick and Riff and help me produce more free lessons. I thank you in advance for every pledge you choose to make. Now let me try to play some A blues. <laughs> works as well. So yeah, I'm still in analytical mode and still trying to figure out new ways so I can show you. So uh, what I just did was a blues turnaround. Go see the five essential blues turnarounds uh, lesson to learn how to turn around. Okay, we've done enough uh, in this lesson to create a toolbox for you, so let me continue. trying to find new ways. Okay, I'm just barring for E7. And I'm playing around with 
nine on the second string. Okay, it's just pulling it off. Okay, and then two frets down, it's D7. Okay, but I'll stop myself here. Okay, you have enough in your new toolbox, so go practice this. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.